You and I are about to take a deep dive into the best master's degrees. Hey everybody, my name is Hisham Khan and welcome to Income Over Outcome, where I talk all about college and making you money. Now most of my videos focus on bachelor's degrees because a great bachelor's can set the stage for your whole career, but sometimes you need a graduate degree to further your career or because you're super passionate about something and want to learn more about it. So our focus today is going to be the best master's degrees based on pay, practicality, and job growth. I'm not going to include clinical medical careers like nursing or physician's assistants because there's so many of those, it's better I make a video dedicated to them. So be on the lookout for that. Up first, we have a degree a lot of you have asked me about, an MPH or Master's in Public Health. Now there are a lot of different things you can do with an MPH, but the CDC lists out 10 essential public health services. Those include developing policies if there's this huge global pandemic and researching ways to solve health problems. Public health is one of those fields where you need an MPH to get those higher level jobs. There is some demand for people with just a bachelor's, but those tend to pay on the lower end, around forty dollars to $50,000. I'd say the best way to approach your degrees if you want to work in public health is to choose an undergrad major that has more value in the job market and then plan on getting your master's in public health afterwards. With a master's, you can become an epidemiologist who studies diseases and outbreaks and makes an average salary of $71,000. Or you could become a biostatistician who works works with data to solve public health problems, like figuring out if one area has a spike in this disease that needs to be controlled. Biostatisticians average $78,000, but of course these are only two of the many options you have with a master's in public health. As you become more experienced, you can earn a lot more money. It's not uncommon for people with an MPH to earn over six figures, all while doing work that has a huge impact on the world. As you can tell, public health is only becoming increasingly important in today's world, so demand for people in the field is only going up. Up next, we have an MBA or Master's in Business Administration. Now, I was thinking about getting one of these after undergrad, so I've looked into this a lot. An MBA can be valuable in helping you further your career in the business world or in helping you get leadership positions in general. But some people I've talked to who graduated from top tier MBA programs have called it a drink beer and shake hands degree. What they mean by that is that a value in an MBA doesn't necessarily come from the content you learn in class, but from the connections you make. That's why getting an MBA from a random school just to say you have an MBA probably isn't worth it. One other thing people with MBAs have told me is that it's better to start your MBA once you have some work experience. That's because a lot of the learning in your class comes from pulling from your own experiences and having discussions. If you don't have any work experience, you probably won't get the most out of your MBA. Some schools might also allow you to specialize your MBA in something like healthcare or management information systems. And I recommend you do that if you know what specific area you want to work in because it can really give you an upper hand over a general MBA degree. Of course, the leadership skills you gain from an MBA are useful in the business world, but also in engineering, healthcare, and virtually any industry. So your pay depends on what type of job you have, but on average, MBAs make $107,000. If you go to a top 10 business school, you can make a ton more money. Those graduates average $178,000, and that's partly because they have much better connections to high paying jobs. Whether or not you get an MBA could be a really tough decision, but the easiest decision you can make right now is hitting that notification bell and like button for the wonderful YouTube algorithm. A small favor like that could really help my channel grow. Now let's talk about MHAs, or a Master's in Healthcare Administration. This is a combination of business and healthcare to prepare you for leadership roles in hospitals and other healthcare organizations. Some people think you absolutely need an MHA to get leadership roles at a hospital, but that's not always true. You can still get those roles with just a bachelor's as long as you have strong leadership skills and the right experience. But getting an MHA is most definitely worth it because it can make that path much easier and get you those roles faster. Some of you might be wondering what the difference between an MHA and an MPH is. And the answer is pretty simple. MHAs focus more on the business and operational side of healthcare, whereas MPHs have a much more scientific approach to solving healthcare problems. Which one you get just depends on what you enjoy learning more about. You can truly get an endless amount of jobs with an MHA, so your salary just depends on the size of your hospital and what your exact role is. If you work for a bigger hospital, you're going to make much more money. I know some people with an MHA making over $400,000 
dollars, but it took them decades to get to that point. According to the US Department of Labor, the average salary for a manager in healthcare is $101,000. And like with any other job in healthcare, demand for them is growing insanely quickly at 32%. You might be wondering if I plan to get an MHA since I work in healthcare. And honestly, I don't plan on getting any graduate degrees because I don't foresee myself needing them in my career. But if I was to get one, I would probably choose an MBA over an MHA. That's because I already have such a strong background in healthcare that an MHA probably isn't going to teach me much more than I already know or I'm going to learn on the job. But for someone who hasn't worked on the business side of healthcare or doesn't have a super specialized healthcare major like I do, then getting an MHA is a great stepping stone to getting leadership positions in healthcare. If you're interested in learning more about degrees you can get on the management side of healthcare at the bachelor's level, then feel free to check out this video over here. I'll also link it in the description. Another great master's degree is engineering management. Like I talked about in my video on the 10 best engineering majors, most of the higher paying jobs in engineering are in leadership positions. Sometimes grinding your way through the ranks can get you there, but it's common for people in engineering to get master's degrees to make it easier. You could also get an MBA for a more general education, but if you know you want to stay in engineering, then you can't go wrong with a master's in engineering management because you're going to cover a lot of the same things MBAs do, but then you'll add specific details to engineering that'll help you grow in your career. You don't really need any work experience to get this degree like you do with an MBA, but I always say before you throw a bunch of time and money into a master's degree, it's worth working for one or two years to see if you really like a job and to figure out if a master's is really necessary. One common approach people take is getting a master's in a specific engineering discipline, like aerospace engineering or mechanical engineering. Engineers I've spoken to have said that if you've never worked in engineering before, then getting a master's in your specific discipline is totally fine. But if you do have industry experience, then getting a master's in engineering management is probably going to be more valuable. Either way, both options can get you to the same goal. If you decide to go the master's in engineering management route, then the money you spend on that degree is most definitely worth it because the average salary for engineering managers is $145,000. One of my favorite degrees is a master's in data science. If you keep up with my channel, then you know I'm a huge data nerd. I talk about it all the time, but that's because data is the most powerful asset humans have. It's already beginning to shape our future. Future. I use it on a daily basis at my job, but there's a whole other level to it. Think about machine learning and AI and how they're being used to build self-driving cars and social media algorithms that keep us hooked for hours. There's a ton of documentaries that talk about how wild the use of data is. Some of my favorites are The Social Dilemma and The Great Hack, which are on Netflix. You should definitely watch them and let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, the point is that people who understand data are extremely valuable to both the government and companies. So getting a master's in it can prepare you for a bunch of high level jobs. Of course you could become a data scientist who average $144,000 a year and find patterns and data to make predictions and really important decisions. Or you could become a machine learning engineer who average $114,000. Either way, there's no shortage of data jobs and you're most likely going to be compensated really well. So if you're a super analytical person who likes to solve problems, then a master's in data science might be perfect for you. In second place we have a master's in computer science. This isn't surprising at all because computer science ranked really high in my video on the best STEM degrees. You can definitely get some really high paying jobs in computer science with just a bachelor's. I know some people making well over $100,000 at 22 years old, but some computer science roles like in research for large tech companies require you to have a master's. In these jobs, you're basically innovating new ways to use technology and computers. So creating a brand new 5G chip and then figuring out how to use that in an iPhone might be something a computer research scientist might do. They are really well paid at an average of $123,000 and as you could expect with most roles in tech, growth is insanely high. Now like I said earlier, you most definitely don't need a master's in computer science, but depending on what you want to do with your career, you might want to look into it. This video wouldn't be complete if I didn't include Juris Doctors, the degree you need if you want to become a lawyer. Now JDs are kind of in this weird spot. Technically they're categorized as higher than a master's, but they're not quite yet a PhD. So I figured I would mention them over here. Becoming a lawyer is a great option. The field is growing fairly steadily, and as we all know, lawyers make a decent amount of money. The average salary is $123,000, but if you go into something like corporate law, you can make well over $200,000 when you're just starting out of law school. This was an information-filled video, so I don't want to bore you with all the details right now, but let me know if you want a video dedicated to law. If you're still watching, be sure to flood the comments with this lion emoji over here so I can personally thank you. Be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already, and as always, here are some dope videos for you to check out. Until next time, take care.